In today's noisy world, learn how you can protect your ears. If you're a fan of loud music, specialists say you'd better put an end to it. Because if you're around loud and noise exposure, uh, these rock and roll bands, that is a mechanical cause of this nerve loss, which will come at a premature time. And so that can lead to a young person needing a hearing aid. And we'll tell you the best way to treat childhood ear infections. By the age of 65, one in six adults will suffer from hearing loss. But you can reduce your risks of hearing loss by taking a few simple precautions. In this episode, we'll tell you about those precautions. And we'll also give you some treatment options for children who battle frequent ear infections. With us here in Lubbock is Dr. Thomas Neal. He's an otolaryngologist here in Lubbock. And to help in our discussion, meet Dr. William Ullum. He's an otolaryngologist here in town also. You'll want to hear what he has to say about the latest treatments available for hearing loss. But first, the gift of hearing can be yours for a lifetime, but only if you protect your ears. Unfortunately, the ability to hear deteriorates over time, and exposure to loud noises can accelerate the process. Medical reporter D Diane Biancolana takes a look at how noise causes hearing loss and shows us the latest treatments for a common childhood ear infection. <laughs> Loud noises are part of everyday life, but if you're not careful, today's noisy world can cause permanent damage to your ears. Take, for example, this group. They're out on the town enjoying their favorite music. However, most of them don't realize this good time can eventually lead to hearing loss. Which is a concern in our society today is loud noise exposure. Because if you're around loud noise exposure, these rock and roll bands, that can lead to a young person needing a hearing aid. According to the Deafness Research Foundation, too many of us are losing our hearing too soon because of loud noise. In the past 12 years, the number of Americans with hearing problems has grown by one-third to an alarming 20 million. The sad part about that is that is preventable and uh, it, it comes on because people are not careful. Of course, loud rock bands aren't the only threat. Noise in the workplace is also a danger. And the Walkman, the portable concert hall of the 90s, can also cause harm if not used correctly. Wearing the Walkman, that's not a problem, as long as you're not blasting it into your ear. It's like any other structure. If you, if you treat it right, it'll last a long time. If you treat it wrong, you're doomed for failure and lots of problems. Here's how loud music and other loud noise can cause hearing loss. Sounds hit the eardrum and cause the drum to vibrate rapidly. These vibrations are carried deep into the inner ear, where they pass over thousands of microscopic hearing cells. It's these cells that change the vibrations into electrical signals that are sent to the brain. And it's the brain that translates the signals into sound. Loud noise gradually kills these tiny cells. As your cells dwindle, so does your hearing. The very first uh, clue might be you just don't understand things quite right, or you may get a subtle ringing in your ears. You may be able to strengthen your heart with exercise, but you can't toughen your ears by listening to increments of loud noise. In fact, you'll do more damage. As the sound gets louder and louder, you will eventually get to a point where you get a tickle of your ear. That is almost like the ear telling you, don't get any louder, you're hurting me. If you go louder than that, you can destroy the ear. As a general rule, you're considered in the dangerous zone if you have to shout over background noise or if you are deaf for several hours after exposure to the noise. So if you work or play in a loud area, use earplugs. Do you hear that? This little boy is also in danger of losing his hearing, but not from loud noise. Eight-year-old Ryan Palanzo had an ear infection. The reason? Fluid builds up behind his ears because his eustachian tubes, small pipes that connect the ears to the nose and throat, haven't fully developed. Since Ryan's tubes are so small, they block up easily, and this causes difficulty hearing. If he was reading or if he was maybe um, working on Legos or watching TV, he really wouldn't hear you. If left untreated, children can have a delay in their speech or language development because they're not hearing accurately. The fluid can get thick like glue and like paste, and that can give them a severe loss. They can lose up to half of their hearing with that. A test at the doctor's office confirmed the fluid buildup, so Ryan took decongestants to keep any fluid from accumulating and antibiotics to prevent infection. Well, after six months, it still hadn't healed itself, 
and after some discussion of like whether or not to go another six months on the same regimen, we just decided to go ahead with the tubes. Ryan's mom, Jill, is talking about a surgical procedure that involves inserting a tiny temporary tube in the eardrum. This prevents fluid from building up as the eustachian tube develops. That allows a pathway for air now to get in the middle ear so that if the eustachian tube stays blocked, it is not an important factor in causing fluid accumulation. Since the tubes have been put in, he's had no infections. His hearing is back to normal. The tubes usually fall out on their own within a year. Complications from the procedure are rare, but can include scarring or perforation of the eardrum. And critics of this operation say it's performed too often and it's not always needed. But Dr. Strauss prefers surgery when medications fail and children have continuous infections. There can be a higher complication rate for a lifetime by being too conservative than the low complication rate of putting these tubes in. By protecting children's hearing at a young age and protecting the ears from loud noises, you can help the precious gift of hearing last a lifetime. This is Diane Biancolano reporting. Continuous exposure to loud noise above 85 decibels will cause gradual hearing loss. A lawnmower registers 90 decibels on the meter, while stereo headphones can soar up to 100 decibels. Earplugs are inexpensive and they can reduce the noise level by as much as 30 decibels. Here to help us in our discussion of premature hearing loss is Dr. Thomas Neal, an otolaryngologist here in Lubbock. Dr. Neal, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Karen. Are you already seeing in your practice patients with the effects of loud noise exposure? Yes, we see a lot of um, young adults primarily uh, with hearing loss, and uh, most of those in the young adult range, would their hearing loss would be from noise exposure rather than from ear infection or, of course, from a hearing loss due to age. What do you tell them? Is it as simple as turning down the volume or is there something else they can do? Well, a lot of them you have to give them uh, some counsel on prevention. A lot of them it's difficult because it may be an occupational hazard. We have many farmers here in West Texas who've been exposed to noise for many, many years uh, through their occupation and by the time they come to see us and they may be in their mid-30s or early 40s, they may already have a hearing loss from their occupation. Uh, you try to work with them in terms of uh, preventing sound, uh, prevention of, uh, of an exposure to loud noise. Uh, such things as hunting and things of that mm -hmm. nature, you can work on with them as well. Mm -hmm. What about ear infection? We heard a little bit about that in the story. Is that a big, big problem around here, kids getting chronic ear infections? I suppose that uh, a very high percentage of children who go to the family doctor or the pediatrician go because of an ear infection. And we need to try to distinguish between an ear infection, which may cause fever and pain in addition to hearing loss, and the fluid in the ears mentioned uh, on the tape, uh, which may cause no pain and may cause no fever and just cause the hearing loss. It may be a sterile fluid behind the eardrum. And they frequently are treated a little differently. Now, if there's no pain, how do parents know that there's a problem there to take the child to the doctor? They may not know. Occasionally, a parent possibly would suspect a hearing loss. Uh, in the preschool age range, sometimes it is difficult to tell. Frequently it may be picked up on a well baby check or a yearly physical exam by the pediatrician or by the family physician. In the story, they said they tested the child to see if he had fluid behind the ear. What kind of a test is that? There is a test called a tympanogram or an impedance that pushes air up against the eardrum and draws air or pressure away from the eardrum and tests for mobility or movement of the eardrum. If there is fluid behind the eardrum, then the uh, eardrum will not move and the tympanogram is flat and that indicates to the uh, person doing the test that there is fluid behind the eardrum. Is that when